Hey YouTube, this is Drew Howden Tech here to show you how to set up a DIY home media server with the Ubuntu server. So why do you want to do this? Well, maybe you want to have a file server in, in your house set that anyone in your family can access and store their files on for backups or storage expansion. So that's the case, you came to the right place. Nice thing with using Ubuntu server is that the software is all free and run on pretty much any computer that you have. As long as it has at least 512 megabytes of RAM and has a 64-bit processor. So yeah, you can use any old Windows XP system or you can just build or buy a new one if you want to. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is download Ubuntu server by going to ubuntu.com slash download slash server. I'll have that link in the description. And then the Ubuntu server 18.04.3 LTS. So will be supported until till April 2023. Now ignore this download, click on the LTS download. At the time of shooting this video, Ubuntu server 18.04.3 LTS is the latest LTS version. I strongly recommend staying away from short-term intermediate releases and only use long-term support versions. Then we're going to click download the LTS download. And if your browser prompts you, you just download the file. Hit OK. I'm going to hit cancel because I already downloaded the file. Get it right here in my VMware folder. Now, I don't actually have a PC that I'm actually going to use as a Ubuntu server. I'm just doing this to show you how to set up up a home media server. So I'm going to be using a virtual machine to do this, but the behavior and everything will be the same. But anyway, what you're going to want to do actually when you download the ISO file is you're going to make a bootable USB flash drive out of it. I made a video showing you how to do that. I'll link it down in the description and up in the card. But anyway, once you've got your flash drive created, you're going to plug it into your server. Then you're going to boot it up. This would be the equivalent of turning on your computer. And you're going to go to the boot menu. And then you're going to go to the CD-ROM drive and hit enter. Then we'll go ahead and boot up the Ubuntu server installer. And once you're in the Ubuntu installer, it will prompt you to select your language. And select whatever language you want. I'm going to be choosing English. And then you can select your keyboard layout. My key or you can identify the keyboard. My keyboard layout is already selected, so I'm just going to leave it as is. And done. And then it's going to give you an IP address signed by DHCP. And then you're going to hit done. That's going to ask you for proxy. You can just leave this blank. And then you can just leave this as is. And then you're going to select use an entire disk. And you're going to select your disk. Then make sure everything's OK. Then hit done. Then hit continue. Okay, then you're gonna, gonna punch in your name. This is Drew Howden Tech. Server name, I'm gonna call this Drew Howden Tech. Ready to use name. I'm gonna choose a password. Okay, then you're going to hit done, and then you're going to install open, open SSH server, then hit done, and then just skip all of this, and then hit done, and then it'll go ahead and install Ubuntu server for you. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. And then when it goes and downloads security updates, you're just going to let it do its thing. Okay, then once the updates are complete, then you're going to hit reboot. Okay, then once it says, please remove the installation medium, then press enter. And you're going to remove the install drive, and then press enter. Then we'll go ahead and boot into Ubuntu server. 
If you ever forget your IP address, you just have to log into your Ubuntu server. And then type ifconfig. Like that. It's probably going to be at the top one. But it's going to be probably going to be something like 192.168.0.157. So now you can do it, configure everything from this, but you might want to work with your computer instead. So on your computer, you go into your command line interface. It'll be the command prompt for the Windows sheep, terminal for the Linux fans. And you're going to type ssh, your username, at your server's IP address. Okay, and then if prompts you this, just type yes. And ignore any warnings that it gives you. And then just log in. Okay, then once you're logged in, I'm gonna type sudo passwd root, enter your password. And then you're gonna set a root password. my demo, I just put in my user password, but this would really be ridiculously long. Like, so, so long and complicated that the average person cannot remember it. The reason why we did this is to patch a security hole, which I discussed in a video that I'll link up in the card. But anyway, yeah, once you've done that, then you're going to type sudo apt update. Then you're going to type sudo apt upgrade. Then you're going to hit Y, then hit Enter, and it's going to go ahead and install any updates. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. Okay, then once that update's done, I'm going to type sudo apt install samba. This is to install the software that we're going to use to share our files over the network. I'm going to enter, then you're going to type Y. Then we'll go through and install Samba. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. Then we're going to create Linux accounts for everyone in the family. I want give access to my mom, my dad, and my brother. And I also want to create a guest account so that way visitors of the house can access the server and, sh and share files to my family. So I'm going to create Linux accounts for all of them. So to create a Linux account, you're going to type sudo add user, and then the username. Creating a Linux account for my mom first. Okay, and then hit enter. Then you're going to enter a Linux password. And retype it. And full name, you could just type in the name of the person, or just hit enter on everything to accept at the defaults. And then you're going to repeat this process for every single Linux account. To make this process go faster, just hit the up arrow key, and then, and then replace the username of the account that we just created with the username of the new account. And I'll meet you once I'm done. And then I'd set up the guest user with the same password as your Wi-Fi password. And then what you're going to want to do is set up those user accounts on Samba. To do that, you're going to type sudo smbpasswd-a, and then the username. And then the passwords that you're putting into Samba will need to be the same as, and then repeat this process for every single user account. I'll meet you once I'm done. And you will also need to repeat this process for your username. And then we're going to create the shares that we're going to broadcast over our network. To that, you're going to type sudo mkdir. Then I'd like to create a file directory in, in each user's home directory. sudo mkdir slash home. 
slash the username slash files then hit enter and repeat this process for every single user I'll meet you once I'm done and then to make it so that way where you can read and write files to the directories that we shared over the network you're going to type sudo chmod 777 and then the directory path and then repeat this process for every single shared directory I'll meet you once I'm done okay then once you're done that you're going to type sudo nano slash etsy slash samba slash smb.conf then hit enter and then scroll way down until you get to the very end of the file okay then once you're there create square brackets and then I'm going to type the name of the share which should be the username of the account the share is for so I'm going to show you what I'm doing then remember you need to put a space before typing And you're gonna type path equals in the share path. And then browse houseable equals yes. And then read only equ equals no then valid users equals who you want to have access to the share in my case I only want my user to have access to the share I want users to have access to their share and the guest share so I'll do that and then I'll repeat this process for every single share so make me once I'm done and remember that I want to give all users access to my guest share. So I'm going to guest access to that share in addition to all my other users. What you're done is you're going to hit control X, which means press on the control key while you're pressing release X. Then you're going to press Y. Then you're going to press enter. And then you want to test the so the Samba configuration file for errors. To that, you're going to type sudo test parm slash etsy slash samba slash smb.conf then hit enter and hit enter. Well, it should look something like this and nothing looks wrong with it, so looks good now. Then what you're going to want to do is type sudo nano slash etsy slash p-a-s-w-d then hit enter then you're going to scroll down to the bottom of the file which should start with the usernames of the accounts that you created and then on every single line below your username you're going to want to replace bin slash bash with bin slash false like this Okay, like that. Make absolutely sure that you don't also do this to any other logins, especially your login, or you're going to be screwed. Then type Control X, then hit Y, and then hit Enter. And then just as a cleanup, you're going to type sudo apt auto remove, then hit Y. I'll go ahead and remove any junk and it didn't actually speed up anything because that's actually how long it took then you're going to type sudo apt auto clean then hit enter there you go and then you're going to go restart the server so then you're going to type sudo shut down now dash r and if you want it to stay off like to move it for example just you just type sudo shut down now without the dash r. I'm going to hit enter. Then we'll go ahead and restart the server. And then once this is booted up, I'll show you how to access files from this on 
on Windows computers, Linux computers, and iOS devices. I'm not 100% sure on how to do this from Macs or Android devices, so, so, you, so you are going to need to figure that out. It'll probably be something like a connect to server in like Finder or Files, if you know what I mean. And to access the files on Linux computers, you're going to go into Files, Other Locations. Then you're going to type smb colon slash slash and then server's IP address. Then hit enter. Now will show our, our shares. Errors. Don't worry about this one. And we're going to access the my share. So then go into that. And then type in your username. And make sure the work group is just work group. And then type your password. Then hit enter. There we go. As you can see, I can access this. Now let's make a test file. Let's see. Let's use a better font. Okay. And then let's save it to my save it to my share. We'll just call it te test. And then save it. And there you go, as you can see, I got my test.odt file running off the server. Now I'll show you how to access it on a, on a Windows computer. Okay, what you're going to want to do first is go to Control Panel, System and Security. And then System. And then make sure the workroom name is workgroup. If it's not set properly, you can just go to change settings. And if user account control prompts you, you're going to click yes. And then you're going to click change. And then make sure workgroup is selected and then just change it to workgroup. There you go. Then just go back to file explorer. Then you're going to go to this PC. And then you're going to click add a network location. Then you're going to click next, next, and then you're going to type slash slash your IP address. And then you're, you're actually going to use black backslashes here. And then the name of the share they want to access, I'm going to access my share. Then hit next, next, finish. And it'll open up your location, and it'll ask you to enter network credentials. I'm going to type your username, and then your password. And this is your username and password on the server, not on your computer. Okay. I'm going to hit OK. And as you can see, you can see that test file in here. I'm going to open that up. Even though it's saying that WordPad does not support all the features of the document's format. And it still shows the files text. To access files from the server on iOS, all you have to do is you're going to use an app called Documents, which is available for free from the App Store. You're going to open that up. Then you're going to go to Connections. You are going to go to Add Connection. You're going to go to Windows SMB. You can title this whatever you want. I'm going to call it YouTube. And then you're going to put in the server's IP address. Then you're going to punch in your login for the server. I'll meet you once I punch that in. And then once you've entered all the information in, you're going to hit done. And then just hit not now. And then you can go, then just yeah. pick which directory you want. And as you can see, I can access the guest directory. You go to Drew, and then I'm going to open up test.ott. And it's not in the same font, but I can still see that, do still see the same text. There you go. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, Hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.